So do you want to? So you want to? So speaking of content creators, do we want to maybe tie this into um, the 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 theme of the podcast and you know the whole thing that I, yeah. I kind of looped you into? Okay. Yeah. So let's do this. So, so again, so we're we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth now about um, the influence social media has on your perceptions, um, your belief systems, your your favorite teams, if you will. Um, you know, there's been, there's a huge political event that just happened in this country last week. We had a, a vote for president of the United States. And, you know, I would see things from both sides and I would go, how can this person be saying that? Like, do they right. not know? Have they not seen what is going on over here? Like, are they completely right. unaware? Like, that's just a completely uninformed. And you see it from both sides. So, Jay, again, kind of came up with this idea. There was a podcaster, uh, content creator, I guess, is a better title for him, Doug DeMiro. My son loves Doug DeMiro. He's one, one, of, the, one of the better car reviewers on yeah, YouTube. I okay. think so. Um, he has an automotive background. He comes from the industry. That's probably why he yep. brings that skill to it. Yep. And I'm not a... Uh, I don't... I don't watch a lot of him. I'm I'm just not as big of a fan. I, but he's on in my house a lot, like as I pass through rooms and stuff. Okay, right. And um, he did a review of the Hummer EV, and he said, "I think this is going to be the electric truck to beat." Right. And just got handed his front teeth by the Tesla fans. And to to say that, so to back that up with his experience, that was just not something he pulled out of the air, guys. That was based on. Well, the evidence at hand. He and, and apparently it was under- a throwaway. He did it. He right. said he did it at the end of the video, with like a couple minutes left, and he just said, "I really think this is going to be the one to beat." And then bring on the tw- the the Twitter wars. Right here we go. Right, right. Yep, yep. So you know, we you and I both watched. He did a follow up video, which was basically let me explain myself to all you haters out there, and he qualified that. And I thought he did a really good job of qualifying it based on things like um, industry experience, right? Like, let's right. look at General Motors' track record. They've already produced a couple EVs. Um, let's let's look at, you know, yes, Rivian's going to be taking orders soon. Uh, they've got a couple of prototypes out there, but they still have some things to work out. Tesla right. doesn't even have their facility built yet that they're going to be building these in. Right, and... Yeah, they don't, and they, he he proved the fact. With you know, he, he went through the whole discussion of, you know, Musk on stage with breaking the windows, and you know, just there were so many different comparisons that he gave that would prove that does prove that GM is far closer to a production of an all electric truck than anybody else. Period. So he knows that we're sitting at the dinner table last night. After you had mentioned, you know, this whole concept of social influencing, you know, being having your decisions be influenced, you know, mm-hmm. by what you're right. what you what you follow and look up and search for. And my son goes, you know, I'm a side shot goes. This Hummer EV thing is a big deal. And I just looked at him and I went, are, are you are you kidding? Like, I'm not really a GM fanboy. I'm really right. not. Right. But. And I'm just, now, I'm going, hey, it's got removable roof, it's got crab mode, it's got zero to 60 in like three seconds, it's got, you know, with big tires on it and all, you know, it's got a lot of good selling points for it, right? right. And he's looking at me like, what? Now, you got to understand, this kid is all day, anytime that he's allowed to have TV time, he's looking at car reviews. He's looking at yep. other stuff, but there's usually, like, <clears throat> and for him to not know that tells me, because he does nothing but search for Tesla, it's not going to show up in his feed. Right. 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 Case in point. Absolutely. I mean, and that's a that's that that social networking, how the things work, and we want to talk about that and the impacts that, that social media has on specific, you know, individuals. You, you yourself. It's it's catered. It's it's tailored to you. So the right? the concern that I have here, and I think we both have, is. Um, they are feet it's an echo chamber so they're telling you what you want to hear whether or mm-hmm. not that's reality or not right okay 
And that that concerns me from the perspective of not just, you know, we were talking about the election and all the kind of mm-hmm. craziness. I, I have seen interviews with the past, including the current president of the United States, the past three. OK, so so Bush, Obama, Trump. So mm-hmm. there's an eight term Republican. There's an eight term Democrat. And then this current president. OK, all have alluded to social media and usually it's facebook being a problem in that it distorts reality so you know people are being shown um you know what they what they have already thought and there's memes coming across that are just not even true and we saw a lot of this in the social dilemma movie Mm -hmm. and there's been some you know scrutiny over that that hey that's a little bit of an exaggeration and it might be, but there's also some truths in there because they're interviewing people that have worked in the industry and saying, hey, man, I helped build this code. I wrote, I built this platform. And I'm telling you right now, it, it ain't good. And it's not looking out for your best interest. And it's not telling you the truth. No. And anybody who has a, who has a phone and who uses their phone for social media, um, who has the Internet at their home, who, you know, in their home who has the internet wherever you go. These days you can go to a restaurant, you can go to a bar, you can log in. And um, if you've been there before, it's, it's, it's saves it as a favorite Wi-Fi hotspot for you. Um, the way this thing works is that it recognizes your habits. It, it follows your every move and it creates your world for you. It, it, it continues to grow your bubble and if, if you don't believe that that's true, then, for example, I will, my wife will be on the internet at home, in home, and she will be shopping online for, say, you know, some makeup from like Clinique or something, right? I'm just pulling that out of the air, but that's true. But, uh, and then all of a sudden, if I'm on Facebook and I, I look in my Facebook feed, there's ads for Clinique. I mean, yeah, that's, Come on, guys. I've I mean, got a real-world example of that as well. Now, you brought up a couple of good points here. So no <laughs> no two feeds are the same, right? As, nope. There's a point that you made there. The, uh, the inside experts in the social media world refer to those as filter bubbles. So you, you had mentioned bubbles. Mm-hmm. Um, it's basically different versions of reality. And right. I th- so the concern is this is creating... It's whipping people up into a frenzy, and it can create civil unrest. And it's not even grounded in facts sometimes. So, mm-hmm. how are they doing that? How it's this AI learning that they're using to learn what you want to be told, right? So we are uh, a couple of weeks ago. This is I copied this from a text message that I sent you. My son and I are sitting in the kitchen on my laptop on my Mac, looking for uh, a wedding gift. Gift, and he's like. Uh, for for you know a, a friend, and he's like, ooh ooh, go look go look at these really nice like electric husband and wife toothbrushes, like the real nice you know like rechargeable ones. So yeah. we're we're looking that up, and m- my wife is also in the kitchen. We're sitting at the kitchen table, and you know seven feet away is my wife, you know, and over like still in the kitchen. She pulls open Instagram on her phone, okay. And she starts seeing ads for electric toothbrushes on her yeah. Instagram feed because there's there's a microphone on that phone. They're listening when you pull the app open and they're listening. They mm-hmm. heard me across the room talking about electric toothbrushes and she starts getting ads for it. I mean, that's, yeah. whoa, whoa. Right, right. If you want an eye opener, really, honestly, people, you if you haven't seen this this documentary or is would you call it a documentary or would, what would you call it a what do they refer this to as uh, a, a docudrama well, it's, it's a docudrama it started out uh, being sort of coined as a documentary and people have pointed out that there's a little bit more opinion in there than maybe you should have in a documentary but it's very good and i get that and and but which is nice to have an opinion i get it but these are people who are are industry people who for example tristan harris was the one of the main guys that that uh, was part of this um he was the former google design ethicist um he was yep. also co-founder and ceo of apture 
co-founder of uh, Center for uh, Humane Technology and the co-host of uh, Your Undivided Attention with Oz Oroskin. So um, these these are no these are people who who got into the social media side of 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 the industry on the ground floor when it started when it really started to make that push in the early two thousands and. I, I remember watching this movie, man. Also, and it, you know, we, let's talk about the influences that this that social media has on people. And you were talking about how the alternate realities kind of form, and they really do. Um, there has been an increase, a heavy increase, uh, amongst teens of suicide um, because of that peer pressure aspect of this that goes on in there and um that's all part of this and if you look at the graph you know the time of teen suicides and then the spike it's exactly when facebook came into play and And so in general the relationships that we would normally have directly right like without Mm -hmm. social media right are there's an element of it, there, there's an altered perception there. And and what I mean by that, and look, you and I have both had these interactions with various people where this might be a neighbor that I would normally be, yeah, we typically tend to see things eye to eye in most cases and where we're different, you know, that's mm-hmm. his right to do that and whatever, man, he's a good person. And then you introduce Facebook into this and literally we're going at it in some thread and I'm going, you idiot, how can you think that, you know, (laughs) when this over here hasn't even occurred to you? Well, how is it possible that somebody that through my own assessment is, as I said, normally we see eye to eye and all of a sudden we're on Facebook and we're at, we have opposing views and that has to be a result of that social influence, right? That altered react, that, that, that bubble. 100% 100% man is exactly what that is. And remember, so yeah, re- remember back several months ago. And and this is when the Ford Bronco reveal happened. Um we were very excited about it. We we had a live podcast, live reveal. Um you went in reserved one. Um and I I put some posts out there on social media about it and how exciting ah, it was. This. Yeah. And I had a, I had a person that, that, that I'm acquainted with come back and say, it's a piece of junk. Um, I've talked to mechanics that say that it's this and it's that and you know, all this kind of stuff. It's not true. Well, how did you have access, early access it, to those engines? Right, I, yeah. right. Right. So it's basically social media influence that he got just making that assumption that everything that he's seeing and hearing is the truth. And that's, you know, another reason why we wanted to bring this topic of discussion up is because it, I mean, not only, I mean, it, it, this, this affects every aspect of, of what we do in life. All of our, all of our purchases, everything that we want to go buy, everything that we might want to go watch, everything that we might want to go do. Well, Uh, and look, if Jay Leno goes on SEMA 360 last week and says, Hey, here's the new Ford Bronco. I want to talk a little bit about it, but there's there's specific things I can't discuss. You right. know, how is some mechanic? I, I I promise you, anytime somebody had early access to one of these, and we've seen this from people like Doug Demiro, where he said, "Yeah, there's five guys standing around me, and there's things that I can talk about, and there's things that I cannot." And you know, the Toyota Venza comes out, and Toyota says, "Hey, before such and such date on the calendar, you are not allowed to discuss drivability of this vehicle." Okay. Right. Well. Okay, well then, how is some mechanic going? Yeah, it's a piece of junk because I've seen it. And yeah. No, you haven't. Yeah. I'm. No, you have not. No, br- right. no, 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 no. So right. that's. And the point, the point I want to make there is that we as human beings have to understand and use some common sense here to kind of differentiate between what is true reality. And what is an alternate reality? So the first thing you can do if you're worried about purchase decisions and influences and making the right decisions there, I'm going to make this super simple. Just go to our website, (laughs) partscountergurus.com. You are just... (laughs) Click on the Amazon banner and shop to your heart's content. And and you know what? Right or wrong, whatever you buy, it supports the show and it's anonymous. So that is, we are not data mining. We are not 
looking at, you know, we don't know who who you are. It's all anonymous, but it does support the show. I just thought it was, you know, worthwhile to me. <laughs> it is. Data mining, by the way, is an important piece to this whole puzzle. And that's that whole privacy thing, too, that a lot of people, you know, when you give in and you 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 say yes to the cookies, yes, they want to know your location, yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. When you're surfing the net, guys, that's you're just allowing access to everything that you do. You are a you are a product. You are a um, you are the product. You have become the commodity by which they are selling your information. I thought that during that movie when I was watching that that, that was an it, it, it was an it was it really kind of it was one of those oh crap yeah I I get it kind of a things man it's like. Because the way they they brought you into that, and it was okay. We have we have a free we have a free platform, a social platform, social media platform. We have a free platform for people. So how is you know how can we monetize this? Right. It's, is is it, if it, it sounds it. too good to be true, it usually is. Do you, is there no such thing as a free lunch? Right. I mean, is it, it, exactly is it really free? Right. So. We as users of these platforms, these these social media platforms, you know, you you they how how does Facebook monetize this? Well, basically they are allowing these companies to advertise and basically put their ad in front of you. Yep. And electric so toothbrush words, companies are paying that, Facebook and Facebook lets it. them put an ad in front of my wife with you know Right. So you, the individual using these platforms, become the product. You are the one that they want to sell you to those guys so they can get that ad right in front of you. That's how it's wor- That's how it works, and it's unfortunate. And then throughout this whole process, there has been other forms of, of um, media false media that gets out there um that is the sole intent is to is to change your thought process and create other alternate realities which has been proven to be the fact from the 2016 election so a lot of people talk about you know russia hacking in and that sort of stuff they didn't hack in these guys just came in through the front door just like any of us do and just sign up for an account and that's it they use the tools that are available to you and me, and they just start running all of this information. And it's up to you as the individual as to what you believe and don't believe, but it's what's going on behind the scenes that places that in front of specific groups or individuals. And they talk about the rabbit hole, Keith. Yeah, that's Why don't a favorite. You get into th- why don't you get into that a little bit? Well, let's, let's. Uh, that's a favorite term of mine because really, uh, okay, so ultimately where this is going is, and I joke, and we have joked on this program, but I ain't kind of joking. I mean, it, I, it ain't too much of a stretch anymore to see this whole Terminator uh, reality, the whole... Right, like the whole uh, Skynet thing coming coming in, into fruition. So, so the question is, um, how do you how do you control this? How do you stop it? How do you turn it around? And it's not going to be easy. And no. honestly, I don't know that we can at this point. And one of the reasons it's going to be very difficult is because of this whole rabbit hole situation where you start to follow the problem, whether that's Facebook listening in on you down into the rabbit hole. And if you ever, the reason they call it a rabbit hole is because it's a, a vast network of tunnels. That's it. And you're not gonna, you're gonna get lost trying to chase down uh, the problem. Mm-hmm. And to that point, you know, Zuckerberg has appeared before Congress. Um, many of these guys have appeared before Congress. There was a data breach a few years ago. There was data mining going on with the Cambridge Analytica uh, analytic right. thing. That was a big deal. And yes. I can tell you, Jay, after watching um, <clears throat> some of that congressional hearing and reading some of the transcripts, that Congress does not really know. Um, they don't understand on a technical level Facebook 
or any of the other social media platforms well enough to recommend guidelines or regulations. They don't have, these are politicians. They don't have, a, they're not, te- they're not engineers. They're not technical engineers. So expecting them to sort of understand that this is not black and white, that they're living in a lot of gray areas, that there are a lot of rabbit holes down here that you go in and you get lost. How do you regulate that? See, and they're, right. so they're, they're hiding in obscurity. The, the social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram, which Facebook owns, Google's doing it too. Google got in trouble. We talked about this with their incognito mode and their Chrome browser, and they were still tracking data even though they kind of told people they weren't. So right. how do you how do you put a stop to that? Okay, so, so this is coming, some of this from the advice of some of these people that we saw in the social media documentary or docudrama and mm-hmm. these are actual like platform developers and engineers. And th- these are some of the things that they said, okay, that I want to get into. Okay. So basically, you, first and foremost, let's bring it back to human interaction, right? Like stop the AI um, utiliz- over utilization, okay? I don't need some flipping car driving for me, <coughs> all right? Now, Walmart, to their credit, is making a move in this direction. Because they had these little robots rolling around in their stores. Jay, you, you, I think you found the article on this, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. The Walmart and, article, yeah. yeah. And uh, and and they were using them to do what? Count inventory? Count inventory, man. Count inventory. And they basically... They, they have... So this is a year ago. Uh, I was... I was in a Walmart and I fi- I videoed this. This is one. This is what they look like. Well, I'll put a link to this. We'll put it in the mention on the podcast. Don't. They're just running around in the store, right? Yeah. It and it and apparently it's it's been a big fail. You know. And they pulled them. Yeah. Well, I mean. You have human criteria, right? right? On a on a on a on an interstate or a county road, you have human criteria. You have stripes right. painted on lanes. Mm-hmm. You have a shoulder. You have right stop signs, mm-hmm. stop lights, traffic crossing, uh, pedestrian cross. So yes, we can teach um, computers to try to recognize some of that. But it was really designed as a human criteria. That's right. And you can't take that. You know, I, I found that when I saw that article, and I, well, I saw, I actually I saw it on the news. It was a news story first, and then I, I read the article. Um, I said that to myself. I said, it makes sense it wouldn't work because, you know, there are too many things, too many variables where the human can think for itself to make that decision where a machine cannot. Yep. Um, now, it's different than if you're, say, in an assembly plant, right? Because assembly plant, you say, grab part, take part, put part here, torque yeah. part down to this. Put put screw repeat. in body, tighten to there such and no, such. Yep. Right. There's no gray areas there. There is no gray area there. But when you're dealing with a large store like this, that it's monitoring inventory, it, it needs to look at what might, you know, well, does it have the capacity to be able to realize that this can that's stuck over here behind here is actually misplaced? It should be here and that it should be counted as so this part number. My son you follows know? a YouTuber and she went into one of your Amazon stores that you have there in the Pacific Northwest where it's a, like a grocery store. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Not a Whole Foods. I'm I talking do. about the Amazon. Right. Okay. Yep. I do. And she touched some things on a shelf, like literally picked it up, looked at it, and put it down. Yeah. And there's no on her checker, bill. and it yeah. got charged to charged her account. It. Yep. Yep. So again, that's that, you know, how do you, you can't teach, I mean, it, it's, you can't teach that to artificial intelligence. I don't They're, see how you, you know, when you, you I can, mean, we're, you can, we're, yeah, because what do you say? Like you can hold it to a certain angle, but if it moves past that, no, right. I mean, you, you know, uh-uh. right. It's, um, it's interesting, you know, and, and, and again, you know, look, Keith and I are, we're, we're, we're big on technology mm-hmm. I and mean, we, we love it. We love to see new 
technology. But we also realize that you know there are just certain things that you cannot take the human element out of. It won't. It doesn't work without the human element. It can't think like a human. It just can't do I it. Don't, yeah, I don't really don't understand why we're all so enthused about letting machines do everything for us. Like I, you know that that's really the right. You know, so so here are some other countermeasures, if you will. Uh, go ahead, Jay. I was just going to say, now how does this robot story, what we've just talked about, tie into the social dilemma? Well, they're and, they're using it, machine it, learning. You are correct, treated as a piece of data, right? And that is the point I'm trying to make: is that yeah. AI is being heavily used as part of that data mining to understand what you're doing, and it creates these algorithms, and yeah. it knows when to place things in front of you. That's a little different, but the problem you have it's irresponsible in how it does well, it. Well, not every it person that is is going to vote for candidate X is going to necessarily right. agree with that candidate on topic Z, right? Exactly. But we're just going to lump them all in together, and we're going to build a scenario where now you're a Candidate X fan. Not every person that orders a Bronco is going to want one with an automatic trans- transmission right. and or a roof rack and or a removable hardtop roof. However, if you force us into all into the same basket, you become a commodity, and you've lost the in, the uniqueness, the independent part of it, the design yeah. your own to be yourself, however you want to say that, right? Right. So yeah, some other stuff you can do, and this is stuff that we live by at home, get those apps off your phone. If you need to go to Facebook, go to the website, facebook.com. You can do that from your phone. You don't need the app installed. Um, turn off the notifications. Use a search engine that doesn't track your search history. Use something like DuckDuckGo. You know, this is, I still use Google a lot because it is the best for now. But in general, if I'm, if I'm not doing something work related and like, let's say I'm looking for that toothbrush or some tires or whatever, I'm not going to use Google. I just don't, it's, they're just tracking every single thing about you. Yeah. Um, and this is a big one, man. These, this is part of the reason why I just don't go on social media anymore. Just, would you please just take everyone, everyone, I don't care what side you're on right now, okay? Just here, do I need to, do I need to, uh... Yeah. All right. Listen, please, I'm begging you. Take 10 seconds before you repost that meme and just fact check it. Yeah. Okay? Just think for a second. I know it looks cute and funny and it's a gotcha in it and all that. Ha ha. I, I'm so tired of seeing these memes floating around. It's like, did you even think that through before you reposted it? Because there's no right, truth and, in it. And not only that, man, is, you know, the human psyche is very fragile as it is anyway. And when you, when you start, when you start posting things that you just don't think about before you do it, you think it's funny. Yeah. But, but, Look, guys. I mean, there are people that are that are that take these things seriously, and it it messes with them, man. And this is what causes civil unrest. This is the stuff that causes civil unrest in this country, man. It's like be very very careful with what you're posting out there, man. Just and, I, I'm, and you know, you know be look, sensitive, sensitive, I, man. Sensitivity. I have become a huge fan of this. Uh, I really feel like, you know, this is almost a Thomas Jefferson type. Um, uh, theology, if you will, a way of going about things. Take information from all sources, the ones yeah. you agree with and the ones you don't agree with, and break it down yourself. Listen to what they're saying. Run it up against your own set of criteria and principles and whatever those things are, and make your own decision. Right. Don't only listen to the the people that tell you that you what you want to hear, and you know, don't only listen to the people that tell you things that you don't agree with, but you need to consider that the people on this side aren't right 100% of the time, and the people on the other side aren't wrong 100% of the time. Right. And, you know, just, yeah, that, that, is, that is very true. Um, and just, just realize, man, that... Um, there are aliens out there. <laughs>